Hey guys, I didn't mean to cut that video off. Uh, I'm not sure how it cut off. I didn't even press the button for it to. It's like my cam, my phone just shook and it just shut off or something. But this is the same round that uh, I'm just gonna label these part one, part two, just so you guys can see two parts of video. Um, you saw my shot come in there, but you might not have seen it, how it quite ended. For whatever reason, my recording shut off. And what I was saying is, you saw I kind of underplayed that. Um, but I was what I was trying to do, if you see where my regular ball was, which was like 100% shot, and then you saw me extend it, it was essentially like five bars with my full rough iron. So since I was probably going to play like six bars or maybe like seven, and when I say bars, I mean rings, like I'm counting rings. Since I was going to hit like six or seven bar uh, rings for that, for how much wind I was going to play, Um, I was just trying to estimate how much my regular 100% was going to play out to just by trying to get a gauge and then you could see me kind of trying to line it up. So that's one of the things that I would I would definitely recommend. Um, what I like to do on this hole is I like to do like four bars, maybe like three and a half. So this is kind of the way that I like to play it here. And then you see I got the side wind. I think this one also plays downhill as well. So you got to overplay it a bit. So I'm going to do at least three rings here. Especially with the extra, especially with the way that it extra likes to extra play. So I'm, instead of playing extra, I'm just going to counter it and see if I can get it somewhere around where I usually play it. Looks like I countered it just a bit too much, but nevertheless, enough to win. So you see there's multiple approaches. And one of the things that I'll do, you notice how I underplayed that wind. I knew I underplayed that wind. So instead of just trying to fix it real quick, because you don't always have the time to do that, you don't want a shot clock. So just think about how you can alter the shot to make it actually go where you were probably trying to anyway if you see that you pulled it somewhere that wasn't quite where you wanted. And that's more, more something that I do when I'm talking because I'm just a little bit quick with my movements. I feel like when I'm actually thinking and actually like have enough time to actually pull and concentrate a bit, I don't do it as much. But it's just another way of correcting. Basically, if you underplay a wind, we we'll just hit a little bit of curl to counter that. It's essentially equivalent. Now, what you don't want to do is, you know, over curl it. So how much curl did I just put on it? It was probably equivalent to a bar and a half or two of side spin, if you can visualize that. If you could see what two bars of side spin would do, what I just curled there was maybe pretty close. Maybe like a bar and a half is probably closer. So if you want to, you know, just play with your spin a little bit, that'll give you a good idea of how the curl and side spin are related. So let's see if we can hit this. I think this is also a downhill shot. I'm pretty sure. Likes to overplay. So you always have to make sure. And as you can see, I'm going to run out of real estate here. I'm not going to want to add too much, but I'm going to want to overplay the wind. So as you can see, I'm kind of overplaying the wind. I'm playing a good five, maybe six bars, and it doesn't need five, six bars. Of course, I shanked it. 
Not helping my case much, but it'll do. Perfect ball would have been a little better, but I'll take it. So I was playing about six bars there. If you're looking at six rings, which would have been like one outside the white. If you're checking, um, like if you're counting my rings. With his Apocalypse 4, I think he has the same accuracy as me. He'll probably do, probably do a similar aim tactic. He has less win than I do, partly caused by his Kingsmaker. Uh, this guy is underplaying it even more, so he does not want to miss left. And he missed right, which is actually is perfect. It's exactly what you wanted to do. So missing right there was perfect. His shot is definitely better than mine, but I can make up for that on the second shot, depending on the wind. So you can get quite aggressive on this hole with where he is with almost any wind. Mine, it's a little bit more touchy. You have to be a little bit more careful on my wind. So what you're gonna see me do, first off, I'm gonna see kind of, let's see, I usually do maybe about two top two top spin, I believe, on this hole. Um, let's see. It looks like to be on the safe side. I'm gonna play it into this tree and just counter it. Just a touch just to make sure that I'm okay. Um, this wasn't exactly the shot to get super aggressive on, and of course I still hit that rough. You don't wanna hit that rough, but if you do hit the rough, make sure you do it like how I did. So that was one of the advantages to playing it the way I did. I hit the rough, but it was enough to where it still runs down the hill. So I was semi-aggressive with how, uh, with my landing zone as to being on the shorter end of the landing zone. Because if you're on the longer end of that fairway, I would have never hit that rough. But you don't have to worry about hitting that rough if you do what I did, which was have the top spin, have the, you know, have the momentum going towards the pin. You'll be okay. And you see this guy did the same thing. His came in a little, little bit softer, didn't quite get down the hill. All he needed to do was to get to the green. So he only missed by a yard or two. So that's a perfect example as to how you can make a mistake and still be okay. Like you saw my ball, it still got to the hole. So. If you were going to screw that up, make sure you screw it up at least the way that I was going to. You saw how he was lining up his in the fairway. He was doing it on the short end of that fairway. I'd take it more to the end if I was you and do very similar to what he was doing. Um, but aside from that, what else did you see me do on this hole? Okay, so you saw me... You saw me hit a left, basically a hook with my curl to make sure I didn't hit the tree. So that's another thing. Make sure you're always considering where the trees are because you don't want to accidentally hit that tree and screw yourself. So what I was doing was being extra protective to counter away from the trees even though I don't know it necessarily would have hit the tree because it was curving away from it. Like it's, be it's best to be on the safe side. Okay, so I'm gonna do something more similar, I believe. More than anything as to why I'm gonna play it this way has to do with um, how much wind this is. So you see here I'm doing I'm 
I'm going to do five and a quarter balls. I'm going to underplay this win by at least a bar or two. So I'm only going to play five. And then I'm going to counter it a bit. Keep it on the short side. Ah, didn't mean to hit that great ball. Hopefully it doesn't count, call, cost me too much. Yep, it does. As you can see, I'm kind of on the left. So thinking about what I just did there, it was kind of involved. It's kind of hard to follow. But so I saw that it was 11 wind down, right? And you saw how I was keeping the aim arrow short. I was keeping it short probably by about maybe three rings short of where I wanted it, for example. And then executing the shot and then just pulling it back three rings less than I normally would have. And then that way, so it evened out once I actually hit the shot. So as you can see, it would have worked out very good had I actually hit a perfect ball. The thing that screwed me there was the baby shank. It made it end up being righter than it would have. Or left, sorry, left. More left than I should have been. Because I shanked it left by, and again, that, that shank that I just did probably cost me at least four yards, at least, because of how curved the fairway is there. So that's one of the reasons that you see me try to counter that even more so. I try to accentuate, accentuate it even more so. I'll do an overhook just to keep it off that, you know, inconsistent part. You see a lot of guys play it towards the inconsistent part. In fact, you saw that guy even land it real close to the rough. I'm, first off, there's no way he was trying to land it that close to the rough. But anything close to that rough or close to that ridge, it can just bounce any which way. You just never know. So it's best to just keep it away from that. So what I'll do, which you don't see a lot of guys do, which is just curl it and keep it off of that hill, even though I'm still shanking it here. Had I not shanked it, it would, it would be more up on the flat part. Right before, like right, right on the top of the ridge there. So that's, that, that's the way I typically try to play that shot. Now it doesn't always work out for me, but I think when I hit my mark, uh, or even within a couple yards, as long as as long as my miss isn't to the left, like on that hill, it it, it flies pretty consistent. All right, let's, so, so let's do a couple more holes here. Um, I'm glad we got this wind and this, uh, I'm hoping I can get something similar because I really wanted to show you guys this shot. Um, there's a couple ways to play this. I feel like the best way is to overshank it a bit. See, this is going to come in a bit hot, I feel. I need to lay off it a bit, but I'm also going to play it off the left of my bullseye here. So you're going to see me shank this intentionally with hook, and I'm going to play it a little bit shallow. You see, I'm taking off a little bit. And it's still coming in too hot. I didn't take off enough. But it gives you an idea of kind of what you're supposed to do. I probably could have did that. 
And the reason that that happened is it's so, it's kind of downhill on that tee shot. So it just launches a little bit longer than you think it is. And I have trouble estimating how much that it actually launches extra on top of it, especially when you're going 120%. So when you're aiming 120%, it's like the difference between 120 to what it goes downwind versus 100 downwind it just it never ceases to amaze me like 120 it'll go 140 downwind like for example 140 percent versus like 100 will only go like 110 so it's kind of crazy but okay so something like this um pretty easy pitch pretty straightforward uh i, I wouldn't need to get you know if i was gonna do it i could basically put it here and probably guarantee that I was going to make it. Um, but it's kind of a boring shot. So I'm just going to go for the dunk here. Just kind of another dunk demonstration. I'm not going to do anything too crazy. I'm putting it inside cup, left side, perfect ball, and underplayed it. <laughs> I didn't think I was quite that far for it to leave the cup, but it did. So, missed that dunk shot. As you can see, I probably should have put it, I don't know, right outside on the lip. I didn't think I was far enough for that. But, and I didn't think the wind was really that strong. Apparently it was. I probably should have put it right on the lip in order to caught the hole. But I'm not really too worried about that. I wanted to play this hole anyway. So this just kind of really makes things better. I'm, I'm going to try to do a similar shot, which you saw me do. Uh, I, I don't know. Let's see. We'll see what he does. I don't expect this guy to, you know, three hop it into the hole like in the other, the other video that you saw. Especially, see, see how he's playing the break? It's like I really try to counter that break, if at all possible keeps it out of the slope see his is coming faster and I cannot believe it another guy gets this hole this is crazy this is crazy because when these guys miss they're like four yard like well not four but they're basically like pushing three yards and this back-to-back -back makes that you've seen against me on this hole it's crazy Um, and their approach isn't really, you know, anything that I feel like you should be doing. Sure, it can work. I mean, you're seeing it work. But I feel like you really should be countering that. Countering that uh, break, if at all possible. So you're going to see me do something similar which is basically counter that. It's kind of always my goal is to just counter this. So you're seeing me right spin it. You're seeing me, and it looks like I babied it again. It didn't hit that down slope. <sighs> so it's unfortunate. I'm missing my spots by, you know, kind of n not very much. I only missed that by, you know, the tiniest bit. And uh, cost me the hole. I 
I definitely recommend, you know, playing your averages. You never know what somebody's going to do. I, I Sometimes I question if I'm playing a bot or not. Because sometimes I feel like it's just a recorded shot. This guy already played this round. There's certain times that I know what happens. But other times, like, I'm, I'm just not sure, like, if they're there. Because certain times, like, guys will be talking... And then other times the same guys won't be, and it's just like, it's just weird. So, and, and, and the way that they line up their shots, it'll be like super quick sometimes. So I feel like you're playing bots a bunch of matches anymore. I feel like what they've been doing is they've been recording certain, certain wins and then they'll just replay it. This is only recently that this started happening. Only in the last month to where I see things that I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's like they're just starting to basically screen capture everybody's shot like the way that he played this hole, for example. And then they're taking that and then they'll match you up with somebody when there's nobody to match you up with who already played this hole and they played it a certain way. They'll just give you the exact same conditions and then play, play you against that video and you got to either beat or... So I'm starting to think that they're starting to do this. And I feel pretty confident I'm on to something that this is actually going on, but... Maybe I'm completely crazy, I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm trying to take a little bit more aggressive approach here. I'm trying to kind of go for it. Looks like I missed my mark a bit. Uh, maybe not. Shoot. I don't know what just happened, how I got on this green. That's gonna that's gonna probably end up costing me. So I can't get to the I can't get to the pin anymore when you hit it into the screen. I was trying to drive it through the green. And obviously I didn't make that. So that's going to cost me the opportunity of actually making eagle here. One of the things you might want to try to do is you might want to stay away from the screen. Uh, this gives you just an idea of what not to do. Okay, so you see I have a long putt here. I mean, the goal here is just get it to the top of the hill. Hopefully it stops. Yeesh. I might not be able to get it to the hole again. <laughs> it's going to be close. It's going to be really close. Regardless of if I can get there or not, if even if I can, um, it's like basically perfect ball. They really have to do something about this, about this glitch. So I can get there. I did get perfect ball. One of the things that you saw me do was I kind of pointed it towards the left there. I was going to, if anything, I was hoping to short hit it, just so maybe the right edge of my arrow would still go in if I hit a great ball. All right, there is no way that this guy 
legitimately gets an eagle here and gets a hold in one. Like, I am about fed up with this hole. I cannot believe I've played two guys that have got this doing things that are basically what I consider counterintuitive. Basically sp spinning it down the hill makes no sense to me. Why would you even think about doing that? So this guy, he's not spinning it down the hill. He's, he's just playing it neutral. He's basically playing the little bit of shank. That's going to take some slope. It's going to be a little bit uh, more roundabout. Looks like he might have got collared there. Probably about three yards, 2.7, 2.5. Okay. So what have I been playing? Okay, I've been playing Titan. So again, I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to basically, you know, I'm going to conquer this thing. It's going to land here. It's going to be right. Okay. So I'm going to play about three. About three rings here, maybe a little bit more just because it's pointing left. And again, I'm babying it. There's something about my shot trail that's just not quite running out as much as it says. If I get it up there, which is a little bit more pin high, it'll come down super soft and it'll be just a yard or two. Basically like 1.4 to 1.7, which will put you in a lot better shape. It's, it's, it's a better consistent approach. Okay, so you're seeing a little bit of what I get, so... You know, this, these clubs here, they're supposed to be random. And, and here you guys can see, like, I'm not getting any favors. Like, there's nothing there I need. I'm not going to try to upgrade. So all this Grim Reaper that you've seen, that I have a Grim Reaper 6, that's 100% from tournaments. I've gotten, like, 300 and something Grim Reapers on tournament wins. So I'm going to do one more hole here. Hopefully we can get another hole that we haven't seen. Hopefully it'll be the UK tour because, but I do have Another thing, uh, look for my videos that are actually, I, th I think they're titled like UK Tournament or something, and you'll see some, you'll see some holes from this tour, so. You won't have to be exclusive in this video. I have plenty of shots from this tour, even though that they're, sh what this is doing is it's kind of rounding out my videos because I have a lot of those UK courses but then now I'm going to have more of this, which I never used to have before. I didn't used to play this, this a lot. Okay, so might as well, uh, I would hit a berserker here if it was me just for fun, but, uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to hit something that's a little bit more normal since a lot of you guys can't pull out Berserkers. And I'm just going to play maybe about seven or eight rings. I'm going to go full ball. Ah, I shanked it too much. But it shouldn't hurt me if I hit the fairway, which I didn't. Jeez, such a bad shot. So terrible. So over... 
overshanking that wouldn't have been a problem because it would have just hit the slope and it would have curved back towards the fairway, but I missed my mark. Just wasn't a very good shot. So what you see this guy trying to do, he has a, a mile. He's doing the same thing, maybe about seven bars, seven rings of, uh, he's also countering it, which is actually going to bring this a little bit more into the wind. Looks like he's playing it pretty solid. A lot better than mine. So, it's not a big deal. There's there's no point of like, you know, getting worked up about where I am. I'm gonna try to backdoor it, just so you guys can see another shot type. I'm thinking I want to do it like this. I'm gonna do it with some side spin. I'm gonna try to stay off of this mound. I'm gonna try to land it about here, more or less. So I'm going to make this my target. I'm not sure how much I need to play this. I'm going to play it about five rings or so. Oh no! I got screen lagged on that. So it landed way lefter and it missed that ridge entirely. It kind of ran out kind of weird, but still not terrible. But I definitely got screen lagged. I've, I've released that. I don't know if you can tell on the screen if it kind of starts lagging. But when I released, it basically went for another second, second and a half. It'll happen every once in a while. Usually after that happens, I'll quit out next round and basically just reset because I don't, I feel like my, maybe my RAM's getting a little full and I'll just restart, uh, all, close down all my apps and come back to it. So if you ever get something like that, where it seems to completely lag you out, you release and it doesn't actually, I don't know if you can tell on that video, but it'd be something to maybe look back and just see if it looks like the screen starts lagging and it just doesn't respond. That's what happened to me there. So, you know, this one is the cliff. This one likes to overplay. The wind likes to overplay here. So you want to add at least a bar. If, let's say hypothetically, I was going to go seven bars here, seven rings of spin to the left for my aim. Well, then I'd want to go, for example, eight at least. Maybe eight and a half. So, let's see. It looks like he underplayed his. He didn't try to straighten it out, really. It's just a ton of wind. Ton of wind. So again, I'm going to do something similar, about three and a half bars. I'm not going to try to counter the wind with anything fancy. So here's five, and then I'm going to go like towards eight rings, give or take. See, eight is there. Maybe I'll come back just a tiny, keep it on the cliff.
See, you can see my app is definitely going laggy. So you see, I was trying to overplay it because you see how the shot trajectory is. Uh, overplaying the wind is good. When you overplay the wind, on it takes care of the trajectory. See how I didn't try to counter that or anything? Because I knew I was just trying to glide it, let it do its natural flow, all that. So again, hopefully you guys learn from these videos. Uh, I don't really have anything else to say. Um, if there's any other comments that you guys have, feel free to make them. If you guys need any other videos, any other tours that you want to see some shots on, um, and hear me talk about them, uh, just let me know. Just comment in the videos, and uh, hopefully you guys, you find my videos uh, useful and can actually, you know, use them. If not, feel free to, you know, make comments or suggestions, and, you know, I'll, I'll do whatever you guys want. No problem.